Something that occurred to me recently is the striking similarities between the plot of 2002's It's a Very Merry Muppet Christmas Movie whew, and 2011's The Muppets, leading to some moments giving off a sense of deja vu to say the least. This is a topic that I haven't seen brought up elsewhere, so this should be an interesting watch for you all. Although these two movies appear vastly different on the surface, with one being a smash hit that relaunched the franchise, whilst the other is a lesser known TV movie loosely based on the festive classic It's a Wonderful Life, they actually have very similar central plot points buried within them. The opening of the Muppet Christmas movie, let's just stick with that, shows us a distressed Kermit, as the Muppets are tied to a contract meaning that if they don't raise a large sum of money to pay off a debt by Christmas Eve, they'll lose the Muppet Studio. Sound familiar? Although slightly different in its approach, the 2011 movie sees the Muppets attempt to raise a more specific $10 million in order to avoid losing their studio to the hands of an evil oil baron. The business-oriented antagonists of both movies happen to be named Rachel Bitterman and Tex Richman, with both of these characters' surnames parodying stereotypical traits of villains. So the 2011 movie basically recycles this joke with a new coat of paint, but actually pulls it off better in my opinion, which is the case with most of the borrowed material I've picked up on so far. The Muppets band together in both movies to put on a show in order to raise enough money before a strict deadline. They actually fail in both instances after initially thinking they've succeeded, i.e. Fozzie delivering the bag of money on time only to realise it's the wrong bag, and the cash counter displaying an incorrect amount raised, meaning they were in fact, as Fozzie puts it, nowhere close at all. But further events transpire that lead them to eventual success by the end of both films, or in the post-credits in the case of the Muppets. Miss Piggy is also noticeably absent in both instances, having gone off on her own after a supposed rise in stardom. This results in Kermit somewhat reluctantly trying to get hold of her in both films, as she is the one missing component that makes the Muppets complete. Yeah, but don't give up, guys. You know, I'm sure someone will come through. Someone like, um... Oh, I don't know, just somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. somebody, somebody will... Somebody uh, would like, uh... You know. uh all right, all right, I'll go get her. Yes! yes. yes. All right. yes. Well, looks like we got everybody, so we can plan our telethon and raise that $10 million. Well, not to everybody. I think everybody's here. Where's... All good. Miss... All done here. Oh, Piggy. <laughs> Damn it! We're going to get Miss Piggy, right? Okay, 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 you're right. We'll go get Piggy. <laughs> the corporate buildings of Bitterman Bank and Development and Richmond Oil bear similarities too, with our antagonists both residing at the top of these buildings. Inside, they have their own offices, wherein most of the evil scheming takes place. But most significantly, both Bitterman and Richmond are allied with former Muppets being Pepe with Bitterman and the duo of Bobo and Uncle Deadly with Richmond, though these characters redeem themselves by the end of both films. As for the motivations of the villains, they both hate the Muppets and want to own the studio for the sole purpose of demolishing it. There's oil under the studio. Nah, I can smell it. And more importantly, the geological survey says there definitely is. Oh. In two weeks, we tear this place to the ground and start drilling. Richmond wants to use the land to dig for oil, whilst Bitterman wants to build a nightclub there, for, for some reason. We actually get a glimpse of this in an alternate reality where Kermit was never born, but uh, swiftly moving on. We have a very similar sequence in both movies wherein Kermit is desperately trying to get hold of a celebrity guest star last minute. He does this by looking through his old contacts and ultimately fails both times. Later on in the Muppet Christmas movie, we see Pepe hiding under Bitterman's desk, where he overhears a conversation about her changing the contract, ensuring that the Muppets will lose the theatre. 
At this point, Pepe panics and rushes to warn Kermit. This reminded me precisely of the scene from The Muppets, wherein Walter is hiding under a desk in Kermit's office and overhears Richmond's plans to demolish the studio, before freaking out and, like Pepe, rushing to find Kermit. When hope is all but lost, in both movies, Kermit approaches the antagonist and asks nicely for the theatre back, trying to make them see why it means so much to them. Yeah, and the Muppets are like a big family. And for us, that, that theatre is, is like our home. Ms. Bitterman, why can't you understand what this theatre means to us? It's our dream. Which ultimately fails in both instances. The Muppets time to give up your dream. The answer is no. Well, uh, you could have just said that. Though this does create some consistency and emphasizes Kermit's kind and determined nature, before he crumbles, that is. I wish I'd never been born! As previously touched on, the Muppet Christmas movie shows us an alternate reality where Kermit was never born. It's here where Kermit meets a homeless gonzo performing in a mall. It's a really touching moment that's probably one of the highlights of the film. The reason I'm bringing it up here is that it evoked the same feeling as seeing Fozzie in his dressing room in the 2011 movie, with both of these beloved characters being at a low point in their lives, until Kermit puts things right. Everyone matters, Everyone matters. for worse or for better. We can change the world around us. With everything we do. Yeah, so the purpose of this video isn't to belittle one film or the other, but I found it fascinating how The Muppets is the franchise's most successful production, which really helped to put The Muppets brand back on the map. And yet, there are so many elements here taken directly from this more obscure TV movie, which has seen far less exposure to general audiences. This is likely due to it being released in the early 2000s, when the Muppets had somewhat faded into obscurity after their prior popularity in the 70s, which is something actually highlighted in the 2011 movie, serving as a fourth wall break. The relics, Muppets! The world has moved on! You guys aren't famous anymore. Whoa, yeesh. Yeah, and I don't care what anybody says. And I don't care if no one believes in us because I believe. So, if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe to keep up to date with all of the Muppet content on my channel. You can find me on Twitter at someboyonlineYT. And don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching.